Here's a video that I thought would be helpful for anyone who is going to be building a winder stairway and trying to figure out just exactly how the building codes work or what's going to work. And what I started with was this is your typical winder. But I don't know if you split a stairway in half, a landing like this in half, if it's going to be considered a winder. And if it is, you couldn't do something like this. And you couldn't do something like this for a winder. It needs to have a six inch minimum. You can see it right here. Six inches is the minimum for a tread width at the smallest point. And I'm saying this as a building code, but this might not be a building code in your area or even in your country. So this right here might be acceptable. This something like this might uh, uh, be acceptable where this one won't. And if that's the case, you would need to have six inches and six inches here. Now, for something like this, if you have a landing that's 36 inches wide, the stairway is 36 inches wide on both sides, then to make it six inches, you're actually going to have to make the landing a little larger. It's going to be 42 inches from here to here and from here to here um, where on the building plans it might actually say 36 inches i'm just kind of throwing that out there so something like this probably not going to work something like this with the six inches will um, this something like this i would imagine would be guaranteed to work this one would be questionable and what i'm suggesting that the the whole point of this video is to provide you with a number and that number would be 10 and 3 8 inches this would be the minimum for an inside area of a winder type stairway and don't forget i already have a book out on how to build winder stairways and uh, you can get more information about building them in the book and you can visit the website um, for the book and there might be a few links at the end of the video also for more information about the book. But visit the website, click on the Books tab, and you should be taken to the area that you need to get the book. It is a good book, by the way. So 10 and 3 8 inches would be the minimum point, and um, you would need to have some type of a wall around here. I'm, I'm just leaving this here to show you how you get the 6-inch minimum and the point that you would go off of to equally space the treads here or the winder steps. Now the winder steps, by the way, according to the building code, my interpretation of it cannot be more than three eighths of an inch in a variation either. So you cannot have a winder step that is larger or smaller than three eighths of an inch of a variation. So I took this step right here, and that would be this particular step. And I just kind of laid it over here to show you that it's it's um, perfectly perfect, right? I drew it in there. It's got to be. So, and if you're looking for the angle, this would split into three equal um, measurements. And if you have a 90 degree angle, this of course would be 30 degrees. So this would be a 30 degree angle here. 30 degree angle here and a 30 degree angle here. So here we have the 10 and 3 eighths. We block this out with some kind of a post or wall. And, um, and, and again, these measurements are just used to create the lines for the winder. So here we have it. Here's the wall I was talking about. Here's the way the landing would look. This would be the floor plan. We can see where we have six inches minimum here. See if we can zoom in. And since we have six inches here and six inches here, and again, this is going to be our wall or our post. If the landing, the landing cannot come in, you can't bring this in to where this is going to be smaller than six inches. So if I move the wall back an inch, this is going to create a problem for the stairway. So six inches is the minimum smallest point. And here we can see, even though I brought this out to be a corner, you can, you can if you don't want this to be a square corner, you can always angle this off right here. 
And if you do from this point to this point, you have a wall with a 45 degree angle in it, let's say. Um, 90 degrees here and then 45 off of the 90 and then back here to another 90 and again that's probably a little too much information so hope you get that and if that's the case if you did have a line across here then the measurement I believe would be about a little over six inches for this one right here uh, six and a six and an eighth something like that so anyway this right here will work I should say work in most cases. This gives you an example of what we're looking at. Six inches would be the minimum here, and it would be 10 and 3 eighths from here to here. Now the wall doesn't need to be this wide, but you will need to have a surface area here on both sides. So you could always have, if I was looking at the bottom, you could always have a two by four wall coming out here. And then uh, I guess just to give you an idea, Let's just say that this line and this line would be at the edge of a two by four wall. Then the wall would kind of come down the middle here and then come back like this. So you'd have to do some modifications to the design here. And uh, again, this right across here would be a little over seven inches. If I angled this off, it would be a little over six inches and then back to six inches here. So anyway, that is it for this video. Hope it makes sense and uh, hope it helps. If it does, hit the old thumbs up button. And if you have any questions or comments, then leave them in the comment area. And uh, it is off to the next video.